talk, I was all over the place last service, so get ready. I have no idea what the Holy Ghost is going to share with you this service. Somebody once told me to get off my notes more, so I'm, uh... <laughs> so I'm, I, so I'm off my notes off and on. But we're actually, we've been talking about uh, faith without works is dead. You know, before this message, we talked about works without faith is religion. Think about that. You know, if you're just trying to do something for God, trying to get his acceptance, trying to get him to, to do something or move on your behalf through works, it's, it's not going to work. It's not what God's looking for. You know, we talked about, uh, you know, how I had been religious, I actually took my Christian rock CDs and broke them at one point. You know, God was, uh, not God, but the enemy was really working me on the God's rock thing and me reaching into the community of, of people. And he was trying to get me religious so that I would just totally wash that whole thing. I broke all my Christian CDs, you know, just smashed them. And then I started bashing all my buddies who were in Christian bands and stuff because religion's a funny thing. It breeds more religion. It expects more people to conform to it and be like it and do what it, it, it does. Does that make sense? You know, so we can't go through our lives, living our lives religiously. It's, it, it's not the plan of God uh, for us because the bottom line is works demand more works. And, you know, God isn't demanding works from you. You know, I talked about God wants you to pattern your heart with his... And in the process of your heart beating with God's heart, works will be produced in, 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 as part of that. And those are good works, the kind of works that, are, that, that we want. You know, I talked about religion versus relationships. And, you know, I think if I could just give one profound statement today and, and something, you know, for all you, how many guys are the Twitter folks and the Instagrams, you know, if you wanted something to tweet, this is, this is what I'd, I'd say. We need to do life with God, not for God. Can anybody, yeah, can I get an amen? We need to do life with God, not for God. Doing life for God is religion, it's works, it's, it, but when we do life with God, through faith we will produce works. You see, there's a big difference. There's a, a really big difference when you take your heart and you put it alongside God's heart and you begin to do things versus you doing things thinking, I just need God to be happy with me. I need him to not be mad at me. I need to just if, you know, I mean, I can get up every day and, and I do and I read my Bible. I, I, you know, I like to, my wife's like, not every day. I heard that. Did you think it? <laughs> but what if God said to you, let's just go for a walk. Just go for a walk. He said it to me many times. I'm like, there's mosquitoes out there, God. <laughs> it's early. It's, you know? But what if God wanted to change it up? You see, I can, I can allow religion to tell me that, okay, I get up every day, I read my Bible, I have set aside a time to do that, and we should, as believers, have a pattern, we should do those things, I'm not saying they're bad, but if I'm not doing it with God, if I'm just doing it for God to try to make him happy with me, you know, then what if God wanted to do something different? What if God wanted me to do, you know, just anything else other than that, but I'm not, I'm locked into this regiment of religion and, and, and patterns of, uh, what is it, just things that we do. And especially you creatures of habit people, I'm not a creature habit guy, I'm pretty spontaneous, but some of y'all need some work. You're like, hey man, I get up, I brush my teeth, I go this, I do that, I get the paper, I have my coffee, and you know, when somebody throws a wrench in that, you're messed up. Come on, who are you? It's okay, I get it, you know, you're just creatures of habit. 
But I, I want to tell you today, and I want to show you today, how to live your life by faith. Say that with me. Say, by faith. In Him, not for Him. Amen? So, in order to talk about faith, we have to go to the all-time chapter of chapters in the Bible forever on faith, the, the hall of faith, Hebrews chapter 11. So would you turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11? I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to read through some of this. We didn't even get halfway through, uh, through it all uh, last service, so I'm not expecting to get any further along than that in this service as well. But I'm going to bounce around. I'm not going to just read the whole thing. I'm going to read it, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. You know, sometimes you just need, we just need to go and look at a, a, a section of the Bible, and we need to break it down. You know, I can preach, and I can talk, and be topical, but let's look at this chapter on faith, because I really believe it's important for us to know and learn how to live and walk by faith. So how do we do that? Well, we go and look at other people who lived and walked by faith, and then we see what they did, and then we can begin to understand how faith works in our life, and we can do that. Amen? So here we go. It says in uh, chapter, uh, or Hebrews 11, verse 1, says, Now faith is the certainty of things hoped for, a proof of things not seen, for by it the people of old gained approval. Such a fascinating scripture. You know, you know, we're running around religiously trying to get God's approval, doing all these things. I got to pray enough. I got to read enough. I got to go, I got to talk to people, I got to, you know, we have all these rules and all these regulations, and we're trying to get God's approval, and all, it's all right here, guys. God says, you want my approval, all you got to do is have faith. <laughs> if you can have faith, faith will produce all the rest of the works, but if you try to have the works without the faith, you're doing it backwards, and it's not going to work for you. Does that make sense? Do you want God's approval? Have faith. Don't have works. Have faith. You see, faith is a certainty of things hoped for, a proof of things not seen. We have to believe that God exists. Do you realize that everything in this room was made by something that you can't see? Like, well, a, a man made that bench, but yeah, but God made the wood. God made the materials. He created it all in the earth, and it was turned into that. But there's nothing that we can see in this world that was not created by the unseen world that it all came from. God said, let there be light. He created the heavens and the earth. We go to Genesis, but all of that happened through something that we can't see. Think about it. Can you see God? He says, they say it this way. It's like, you can see the effects of the wind, but you can't really see the air. It's invisible. But it's there. We know it's there. You know, if you fan yourself, you can feel it. There's effects of it. So we have to learn to actually operate in, in a realm that is unseen. How do you do that? I can't see any of it. How do I do that? We must believe that it exists, first and foremost. It says uh, in verse 3, By faith we understand that the world has been created by the word of God. So that what is seen has not been made out of those things that are visible. There's your, there's your answer right there. What, you know, we understand the world has been created by what? The word of God. So if, to, in order to have faith, you have to believe in the Word of God, first and foremost. You know, there's a lot of people that don't believe in the Word of God on the planet. You know, atheists, agnostics, whatever. They, they, so if you're going to live and walk by faith, you've got to first believe that God exists and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. In, in verse 6, if you could flip over to verse 6 real quick. I don't know why I'm jumping ahead, but I am. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. How do you seek God? By faith. How do you receive a reward? 
you know, by faith. Everyone's like, yeah, uh, yeah. How do we make that more practical? Well, let's look at some of the different people. You know, it says, by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, uh, through which he was attested to be righteous. God testifying about his gifts and through faith that he is dead and, he's, and it still speaks. He had faith. You know, you got Cain, you got Abel. Cain tried to, to give his sacrifice to God by works. He's like, I did all this stuff and I made this thing and I did all this stuff and God and the works were there and, and he brought it to God and God looked at it and he's like, ah, I don't see any faith in there at all. But then Abel brought his sacrifice. He brought it by faith. He did what was required. He, 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 he brought the blood sacrifice by faith. So why did God accept Abel's offering and not accept Cain's? Because faith was attached to it. You see, we can't offer something to God that doesn't have faith attached to it. If you try to bring something to God without faith, he's going to look at it and he's going to go, that's just works, man. I don't want works from you. I want faith from you. And faith will produce the works that God desires from your life. So what I'm trying to show you is the, the, the key to all of this is, is to walk by faith. That's what I've been talking to you about. That's what I've been trying to tell you about. You've got to get your heart, part, you know, partnering with God's heart, where you're running side by side, where faith is, is mingled, and, and you're believing everything that God is doing in your life, and you're right next to him, side by side, running, running, running. And all of that running is producing something. It's called works. Faith-filled works. That is the kind of work that we want to produce for the kingdom of God. Does that make sense? Let's look at, look at it this way. It says, By faith Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his house, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. So what does faith look like? Well, faith looks like God speaks to you, tells you to do something, and it seems crazy. I want you to build an ark bigger than a football field by yourself with you and your family. And then I'm going to fill it with animals. And then it's going to rain. It had never rained on the earth before. Think about that. So what do you think it looked like in, if, if I mean, anybody ever see Evan Almighty? Right? That's what it would look like nowadays. The world, the news guys would all be there. Everybody would be like, look at this idiot. Look at this guy. What does he think he's doing? It doesn't make any sense. The, the, the Bible says that, that the world thinks that the that, that things of God are foolishness. You know that Noah was actually probably one of the original conspiracy theorists. All right, come on now. You conspiracy guys are in here. You can't fool me. I know. I know. I track with you sometimes. But think about it. It's conspiracy theory. It's going to rain. You're going to all get flooded out. God's going to judge the earth and everything's going to, you know, be horrible. And I'm building this ark to save me and my family. I mean, somebody would look at that, you know, if you put that on Facebook right now, everybody would be like, that dude's crazy. You know, the problem with, you know, Noah's conspiracy theory is that it, then it rained. You see, he was, he was walking by faith. And then they're banging on the walls. They're saying, let us in. Let us in. You know, see, if we truly walk our life by faith, God is establishing something in the earth through each and every one of you. Do you hear me? God is establishing something in the earth through each and every one of you. And if you will, by faith, begin to pursue him, begin to look to him, he will use you in a way unlike anything you've ever seen in your life. But it takes faith. Don't go building a kingdom for yourself, for God. I've done that. Doesn't work. Tried it. Bought the t-shirt. For real. I've done these things. I've been doing 
I've been doing Jesus for 33, you know, almost 34 years. I've done everything wrong you could imagine. I've done it all wrong, every little last bit of it. I've done it, and I've done it wrong. But you see, now I can stand here, though, having done it all wrong, and help you keep from doing it wrong. You know? And I'm not saying I've arrived and, oh, you need to listen to me. I'm going to keep you out of every ditch. No. You know, life is, life is a journey, and we have to go on it. But imagine Noah's journey. And then, you know, the whole earth was, was reestablished through his family. Because he, by faith, did what God told him to do. What's God telling you to do today? What is God, you know, stirring in your heart? Is your heart even close close to his? You know, I mean, really, that's, that's part of the whole thing of what faith really produces is are you even running with God? It's a question to ask. Are you running for God? Are you running in him or for him? Trying to do something godly, but not really hearing. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which was uh, to receive for an inher- which he was about to receive for an inheritance, and he left, not knowing where he was going. Some of you guys are like, that's crazy. I can't do things without knowing where I'm going. You know, I told, I, there's a family that I met in the 90s. We were at a meeting at Palm Chapel. No. Was it easy? Was it? No, the Hattori family. It was at Palm Chapel, right? All right. You good? Am I okay? <laughs> River of life now, but it was Palm Chapel at the time. All right. Just got to get permission, you know, to tell these stories the right way. <laughs> I'll get it. Don't laugh, you guys. You know, it's all girls that just laughed. heard that, right? None of the guys laughed. They're all like, dang, that's for real. <laughs> Man. But anyway, this family, was a, they were going to be missionaries to Russia. The Hattori family, I'll never forget them as long as I live. They were from like Pennsylvania or somewhere way up north. And God told them that he was going to train them to be missionaries, get in their car with their whole family, and, and just pack some clothes and he was going to take them on a journey and learn how to be to learn how to be missionaries and to hear his voice. And they said that God told them to go to every intersection and go left, right, or straight. And they ended up three weeks later, all the way down here in Florida, at a meeting at that church that I was at. And they would literally have a half a tank of gas, and they would hear Lord say, "Pull over right now, go to that pump at that gas station." They would pull up there, fill up their tank, had no money, fill their tank up by faith, and then somebody would pay for it every time. They would take their family of five, go sit down at Applebee's, order the meals for everybody, because God told them to go to Applebee's. It's a free plug for Applebee's. I can do that in Merritt Island, because it's, it's, not, it's not there. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> Think about it. Could you, if you heard from the Lord, go sit down at Outback today with your whole family and order a meal with zero money in your pocket? <laughs> they did that. I mean, and they would get, and they would, it would be paid every time for three weeks. So they show up at this uh, this uh, event, and you know, me and my wife are there. And they were like, we're going to be doing music ministry in Russia. And I'm like, oh, I have a guitar and I have a keyboard. I should, I should give it to them. You know how you ever, you ever have those weird thoughts? And you're like, you rebuke it? You're like, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. <laughs> give away my keyboard and my guitar. I must be the devil. No, it was the Lord. I actually took the... Uh, I, I said, well, I got to check with my wife. It's her keyboard. It was my guitar. That was easy. But I was like, Lord, it'll be a divine appointment, miracle from heaven if Lisa gives his keyboard away. So I'll go to her and I'll, uh, <laughs> and I said, well, I felt like God said we should give this family this keyboard and guitar. And she's like, do it. And I was like, 
is the easiest yes I've ever gotten in my entire life. <laughs> to this day, that's why I can't forget this family. She's like, do it. And I'm like, okay. And we gave them that, the, those instruments, you know, and, and we sewed into them, into their ministry because God was supplying for them. God was providing for them. So what am I trying to say with this whole story? What's your adventure? What's God trying to get you to do? What's God stirring in your heart? You know, because all the provision is there. Is it Maybe it's a, a ministry to heavy metal people like God's rock for me. What is yours? What is it that God's calling you to do? He's reaching towards you and saying, Just have faith. Step out of the boat. Get out on the water. Watch what I can do. You know what? It didn't look amazing on day one. I'm sure the day that, that Noah broke ground on the ark, it wasn't like, I can see it. He had to build it. He had to add. He had to, you know, listen to God every step of the way as he built that ark. He didn't have an architectural blueprint that was approved by Brevard County Code Enforcement. <laughs> he just built it. And God wants to build things through you guys as well. You know, but Abraham, he's wandering around in a foreign land, living in a tent with Isaac and Jacob, founders of the same promise. For he was looking for a city which has found its foundation, whose architect and builder is God. What is your city? What is God wanting you to build? You know, God has something for each and every one of you. And if you can tie into this by faith, it will produce the works that it will come out of you. Everything that you need has already been given to you in Christ through the cross to do whatever it is you feel led to do, you know, by God. And if he's called you, he will provide for you. He'll bring it. I mean, there's just so many. Look, it says... By faith, Sarah received a child. By, you know, uh, by faith, Abraham offered up, went to offer up his son. You know, you think, gosh, God's telling him to go and, and, and kill his own son. But it was a pattern. God was trying to show him what he was about to do. He was showing him the promise that was coming for the whole world. It says, all of them died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen and welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, for they who say such things make it clear and they are seeking a country of their own. Think about that. Every one of those guys, the great patriarchs, by faith, it was counted unto them as righteousness. Uh, you know, uh, Moses delivered the people out of the land of Egypt by faith. It's all in here. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. Can you imagine the miracle that, the, that was the parting of the Red Sea? That was all done by faith. Moses had to walk the people right into the, the water with the army coming behind them, knowing they were trapped, knowing it was a dead end. And, and he took his staff and he stuck it in the ground and the ocean opened up. What's God not willing to do for you if you will walk beside him? You see, Moses... Was, was a friend of God. You know, the, the key is that we become God's friend, not that we become his puppet. He's looking for relationship, not religion. I mean, God even used Rahab the prostitute. She had faith. Your God, it, we've, we're in fear. We're trembling at, at, at the name of your God. I, will, I am going to save you from our people. And would you make a promise and a covenant with me and save me? She had faith. She saw it. So what, how, how do I bring all this around? Because it says, what shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, who all by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, 
shut the mouth of lions, quench the power of fire, escape the edge of the sword. From weaknesses were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, accepting uh, their, and their release so that they might obtain a better resurrection. You see, it says, and all of these, having gained approval through their faith, did not even receive what was promised. Because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. You see, the promise was Jesus. They lived their lives by faith prior to the cross. Pre-cross, they had to endure by faith their trials, their lives. They had to listen and walk their walk with God to, to be recorded and, and for the line of the Messiah to come so that Jesus could be brought into the world. They were all part of the plan. And guess what? The cross happened. Jesus is uh, the Savior, and, and the promise has been fulfilled, and it's been given to each and every one of us. But now the promise post-cross is the hope for a lost and dying world out there that God would put faith in each and every one of you and you by faith would go out there and share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ with those who are, are perishing. And they would experience life and life abundantly in Christ. So, you know, we can sit here and, and be a religious church and sit here and have church every week and never affect anything out there. If we're not careful, we can fall into the trap of religion and, and never by faith have, have, have the power of God be released in any way, shape, or form. Why do I call everybody up here? By faith. We're calling the word. We're calling those things that be not as though they are. We're anointing you with oil. We're going to pray for you. And we're going to keep praying for you till healing breaks out in this place. And it runs this place over. People drive on our parking lot and get healed. People drive by and get healed. They read our sign and get healed. And the next thing you know, they can't not be in here because the power of God is moving so powerfully because the people of God are walking it out by faith here. And with faith in their hearts patterned with God's Miracles are breaking out, which is exactly why Jesus came and died for each and every one of us. <laughs> it's true. Come on. Stir up your faith. Do something amazing. <laughs> you know, many people like saying that Christianity isn't religion, it's a relationship. And this is true, but it's not the entire truth. Christianity is a religion. But as believers, we should treat it as a relationship. You know, a lot of times we say things like, relationship over religion, Jesus over religion, you know, and I'm saying that today, but, you know, we forget such things as repentance. Repentance. In sanctification, you know, there is a process that our faith takes us through. We cannot, you know, just fall on grace as a catch-all. We have to take that grace and operate through faith with it and then begin to produce works for the kingdom of God. You know, the bottom line is this, another tweeter. For you Twitter folks, are you a Twitter? Who's a Twitter, people? No Twitters? All right. Well, all you guys are, you know, you're my age. How many Facebookers are in here? <laughs> yeah, right. Here's the, uh, here it is. Evidence of your faith in Christ is that your life will change. My life changed. When I gave my life to Jesus... Addiction fell off of me. Uh, you know, I actually, I quit cussing. Ephesians 4.29 got real. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that is edifying to those who hear it. I was like, wow. Right, Damster? That's, his, that's our scripture, man. We were running with that one. I didn't willfully stop cussing. By faith, I partnered with the heart of God, and my heart changed. It produced in me works. My faith 
produced in me works. Those works were, I didn't want to cuss anymore. That's why we tell people, you know, we're not telling you to quit drinking, quit smoking dope, quit doing all these things, and then you can come and hang out and be a part of this Jesus thing that we're doing here. I tell them, come be a part of this Jesus thing that we're doing here. Pattern your heart with God's and all that stuff will fall off you so fast you won't even know what happened to it. That's true faith. True faith is that your life will change. It has to. But, you know, John 14, 23 says, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home, and we, we will come to him and make our home with him. See? God wants to make his home with you. He wants to live with you. He wants to marry you. He wants to cohabitate with you. He wants to do life with you. Every area, every second, every moment of life, God wants to be with you and do life with you. And by faith, when you have that type of a relationship with the Holy God, you cannot help but produce through that faith, good works. It just comes out of you. It's our hearts with His. We, we obey out of love, out of gratitude. We don't, we don't obey God because He's going to thwart us and He's going to smack us and He's going to cause us to get sick. I hate that idea that God makes you sick. He's going to teach you something. That's absurd. Would you do that to your own kid? Why do you think God would do that to you? Sickness is of the devil. And I want to eradicate it. I want to eradicate it from this place. <clears throat> They're over here, Lisa. James 1, 26, if anybody among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, that one's religious, religion is useless. So what does that mean? It means, you know, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You want to learn if you're religious or not, look at what's coming out of your mouth. Look at what you're truly believing, because in that you can test everything from, from your tongue. <laughs> no one's like, ooh, ugh. Anybody hungry for pancakes? <laughs> On that one. It's like, bacon! Ten minutes. You'll have bacon. Anybody want to make it five, five? Who'll give me five, five? <laughs> Yeah, give me five, five, five on the bacon. Three, three, three. All right. No, I can't do one. Sold at three. <laughs> Matthew Henry's commentary of James 26. Well, let me read 126. It says, if anyone among you thinks he's religious and not right, I did. So, but his, his commentary said, true religion teaches us to do everything as if we are in the presence of God. Everything. God wants you guys to pursue him. That's all, I, I can't say it enough. You know, religion kills intimacy. If you can't have an intimate relationship with God, you're, you're religious. Because God loves you. And, and love produces intimacy. And when you draw near to him... Uh, you know, it's that relationship that he desires. That's what he wants. Colossians 3, 17 says, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Not for him. Through him. Connection. Relationship. 
You know, your words don't mean anything if your heart's not right. It's the bottom line. You can say it. Say all you want, but if your heart's not there, it doesn't mean anything. You know, you've had people look you in the face and tell you things, and you knew their heart wasn't behind it. You think God's any different? You don't think he can see that? You don't think he can see in us when we're just... I can't say that reference. <laughs> had the word smoke in it. Words mean nothing if your heart isn't right. So what is faith? Faith is patterning and getting your heart right with God. Learning and knowing him through the word and then through that reaching into his call and his purpose for you and seeing people's lives touched and, and transformed. Leonard Ravenhill said this. I love quotes. I'm been quotes in this message. A bunch of quotes came through, but Leonard Ravenhill. Anybody know who that is? A couple of you, maybe? Yeah. I knew you would, Mark. There's no place on God's earth more exciting than the church of the living God when God's moving there. And there's no place on God's earth more boring than when he isn't. <laughs> if you're bored, it's not the Lord. I make bumper stickers. <laughs> it happens. You see, when our hearts are filled with joy and excitement, and, you know, our heart knows our maker. Your heart knows Jesus. As a believer, you are in tune with him. You'll know him. And religion doesn't know it. It just does these things that try to gain that approval that is already yours if you would just pattern your heart. I believe that your prayer life actually dies when you become satisfied with religion. You're like, man, my prayer life's dead. You're probably religious. Rework your angle. Get in faith. Allow God to move you into a new direction. Get in close and he'll just start producing all this stuff in you. You'll be like, oh my gosh, what's coming out of me? I have faith and now look, all these things are coming out of me. Prayer shouldn't be a chore. It should be a joy. Like, I get to pray. I get to hang out with the Creator. You know, we pray every first and third Tuesday night right here. What, all... I mean, I... I seven of us? Come on out. If you don't know how to pray, it's all good. Is just come get your heart right. Set yourself up. I need to set myself up for a lot of different things. You know, but as I do, they produce these amazing things that come out of me. Every time I position myself with God, fruit comes out of that. You know, works come out of that. Because my faith cannot not produce works. But if I just try to do stuff and I've become exhausted you know, being a pastor, I've done it all in my own strength, and I've done it through faith with God. And by faith with God works better. Because all that, all that your life will produce when you're religious is exhaustion. You know? Like, I'm so tired, man. You're doing life without him. Plug in. Get him involved. You can take God to work with you every day and hang out with him at work. Right? Or do you just want to go to work? How much more exciting could work be if you were working for your employer with God? It's 
instead of like for a lot of people in my position just working for God. And then if you don't have them with you, you just get exhausted and burned out. You know, the, the rate of burned out pastors is brutal. Brutal. Man, we got to go eat. It's almost 1130. We, we can't go into lunch and have breakfast. All right, let me close this up. Deuteronomy 4.29, in closing, in honor of bacon, we should run to God's presence, right? But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. So let's just seek him, guys. Let's run for him with all that we have. Everything within you. Take that moment. Take that time. Bring yourself to a place where you're like, all right, I, I, I've done my life every other possible way. You know, I always, it's like somebody who's suicidal. If I'm, I'm counseling them, I'm like, well, if you're willing to kill yourself, why not just die to yourself completely and give your life fully to Jesus and see what he might produce out of your life instead of being so miserable? Allow God to come in. And, and change you. And, and you know what? It works every time if they do it. It's like I'm not depressed anymore. That's because your focus isn't on you. It's on God and what he's doing. Your heart. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, we're just so grateful to be here at Lighthouse Church. We're, we're trying to grow. We're trying to learn how to uh, just do this, this walk with you intimately with you, this, these moments that we can just have with you by faith. Lord, help us to recognize religion in our lives and just strip it out and just run with you, run the race with you, filled with faith. If you're here today and you say, I, I need to run my life with God, I need to run my life by faith, Maybe you haven't even been religious. You don't know anything about it. You could just be like, man, it's the first time I've even heard any of this stuff. But you know what? God loves you. He's passionate for you. And if you would give your life to Jesus, he'll do things through you you never thought possible in your life. So if you're here and you say, that's me, I need to give my life to Jesus. I know most of you and most of you have already done that, but there may be somebody here that says, I need Jesus in my life. Would you just... Lift your hand real quick. Say, that's me, Pastor. I just, I want to accept Jesus. Amen. I see those. Anyone else? Join those two. Would you all just pray with me? Just say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, we ask you to come into our life. Show us how to walk by faith. We need you. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our prayer team come up.